The steamship Wisconsin of 1875 was a 3,238-ton ship built by Palmer Brothers and Company, Jarrow on Tyne, in 1870 for the Guillen Line of Liverpool. Her length was uh, 366 feet, 43.2 feet wide. She had one funnel and two masks, single screw with a speed of 11 knots. There are several reasons that John III and his family waited for three years after his father's family came to Zion to immigrate. One was his military service and another was lack of funds. Three years later, from Bear Lake, Godfrey, Christian, and Samuel helped finance John's trip, Godfrey doing the biggest part. Rosina came later because her husband, Johannes Bischoff, was not yet converted. William J. relates in his autobiography that once John III and his family were aboard the SS Nevada, they spent nine days aboard ship before reaching Castle Garden, New York. They spent one night at Castle Garden and then boarded a train for the west. William J. was eight years old. He recalls that the train was ferried across the Mississippi River, which he called an impressive sight. The family reached Ogden July 4th, where an Independence Day celebration was in progress. They then traveled to Logan from Ogden on the Utah Northern Railroad, where they spent two weeks in Logan with John's aunt Rosina Kuntz Morrow, who with her twin sister Katharina had immigrated in the same company as John II in 1870 and married Thomas Morrell in 1871. When a team and rig came from Bear Lake driven by Uncle Samuel Kuntz to take the family to Bear Lake, Great Grandma Rosina Katharina Klossner Kuntz stayed in Logan with her daughter. The remainder of her life nearly ten years and visiting her posterity. She kept the faith until the end and was buried in Logan. Rosina's small, 8-inch wide by 10-inch high headstone was showing the wear and abuse of about 130 years of sentry duty, so in July of 2012, some of her descendants bought and set Grandma Rosina a new memorial housing the original in the left front corner. The rig was heavy, heavily loaded as John had brought two large copper pots besides the family possessions from Switzerland for the making of cheese. Peter Jensen from Ovid met them in Mink Creek with another team and rig and the load was split before coming over the canyon. Once in Ovid the family stayed with grandfather John II until October when they moved to a two-room log house that had been built for them on Aspen Creek below the present location of Burn. The first winter in Bear Lake was spent in that cabin. The ward teachers would come from over to visit us on their snowshoes. In grandfather's own words, quote, thankful to the Lord for preserving our lives up to our arrival in Zion. Being my grandmother was a fellow passenger in my care in the 71st year of her life and my wife with ruined health and three small children and rejoicing to meet father, mother, seven brothers and one sister all well. We proceeded to start Pioneer Life. We built the first house in the Burn District, Bear Lake County, Idaho, which we used for a dwelling the following year. But my wife leaving us through her death on May 22, 1874, which brought an entire change into our family affairs. And again, in father's own words, John III, quote, having to leave my children in the care of relatives and seeing that time would bring a barrier between my children and myself, I married my deceased wife's sister, Sophie, to fill, at least in part, the place of a mother to my little children which she very nobly did." End quote. John married Sophia Strabar October 26, 1874 in the Endowment House in Salt Lake City with President Daniel H. Wells officiating. 
Sometime between the death of Magdalena Strabar in May and October with his marriage to Sophie, John was called to practice the eternal law of plural marriage. So on November 2nd of 1874, just seven days after his marriage to Sophia Strabar, he married Magdalena Linder, also in the endowment house with President Daniel H. Wells officiating. I need to stop and insert a few comments about William J. and Rosie and Johnny's mother, Magdalena Strabar Kuntz, who was in poor health from the time of Rosie's birth and Johann Jacob's death and the ensuing fever that lasted for over three months while she was still in Switzerland. Despite her health problems, she gained a testimony of the restoration, was baptized into the church and withstood the rigors of immigrating with her husband and family in 1873. In October of their first year in Bear Lake, John moved his family down below Bern on what has become known as the outlet as he was feeding cattle and sheep for Apostles Charles C. Rich in that area into a cabin very similar to the early cabins I have shown in the area. That was the beginning of snowfall that stays in Bear Lake. I was raised in Bear Lake and am familiar with the winters in Bear Lake. Magdalena was looking after her family consisting of three small children, the oldest being eight and her husband in a cabin that would have been a test even for a woman of good health just to keep heated to a tolerable temperature. There was no inside plumbing or running water. There was only wood heat. The cabin was isolated to the point that the war teachers came on snowshoes from Ovid. The rigors of pioneer life took its toll on Magdalena, and because of her worsening health by March 15, she had to be taken back to Ovid to stay with Grandpa John and Grandma Rosita for better care and less strain. Even the trip back to Ovid that time of year must have been an ordeal in itself. When William J. in his autobiography says, we remained at the place below Bern for some time afterward, and were taken to Ovid about four or five days before Mother passed away on May 22nd, 1874. I have to assume that William J., when he says we, he is referring to his father and, fa and the rest of the family. It was at this time that the brethren from Salt Lake, whose names were President Brigham Young, Wilford Woodruff and Charles C. Rich, those were the only ones that were named, there may have been others, were holding meetings in Bear Lake with Wilford Woodruff and Charles C. Rich being in Ovid. These two were asked to administer the Magdalena, which they did. During the administration, they promised her that the door would be open for her to inherit the celestial kingdom. After that administration, she recognized her time had come. She gathered her family, including her husband, who had to be summoned from a meeting he was attending, bid them all goodbye, requesting of him to be kind to the children, and within hours she had passed through the veil. All of Magdalena's posterity should be proud and grateful for the special spiritual woman through whom they came. It was at the time of these meetings that William J. saw Brigham Young for the first and only time in his life.
In the spring of 1871, when John II and his family got to Ovid, Bishop Budge left two cows with the family. When John started the making of cheese in Ovid, it was in a borrowed kettle with the milk from cows rented on shares. Cash was in short supply. Roberts said of October 1871 in Ovid, we were happy and did not suffer from want of food, but our school was poor. Here in Ovid we had a home we could call our own, and we soon had a start of cows and sheep, and did not suffer. Robert continues, owing to having so many cows on shares during the summer months for dairying, it was better to go outside of the little town Ovid for pasture. So our bishop, Bishop Ed Lefson, advised us to move to what is now called Burn. Bishop Ed Lefson had the squatter's rights which he sold to the Coonses for $50, with David putting up the $50. John II and his family had been pasturing in the Burn Range prior to this agreement even though Bishop Ed Lefson had the squatter's rights because the area had not been surveyed, and rather than get the survey, Bishop opted to sell his rights. Apparently this transaction took place prior to 1874 as the first home in Bern was built in 1874 and the family moved to Bern in 1875 and they wouldn't have built on land they could not homestead. Robert describes Bern, it was nice there. The grass was up to my waist in the hills and my job was to herd the cows on an awful saddle bulky mule. Christian Kuntz, John II's oldest son to immigrate with the family single, met Elizabeth Bueller, daughter of Ulrich Bueller, on the passage from Switzerland. Elizabeth stayed with her sister Annie Bueller Hicks in Salt Lake City. Christian was in Logan during the fall and winter of 1870-71. He called on Elizabeth several times from August to December to get better acquainted. Christian married Elizabeth on December 6, 1870, and Robert Kuntz said Christian lived in a small house near the rest of us in Logan, moving to Bear Lake with the family in the spring. In Uncle George Kuntz's book, History of Burn, he states that in 1872, Elder Charles Rich had John II and several of his sons build a cabin on his ranch on Aspen Creek about a half mile east of Bern. During the winter of 1872, Christian and Elizabeth lived by the Aspen Creek near the outlet below Bern, and Christian worked for Charles Rich, caring for sheep and feeding cattle. Apparently some of John's sons worked for Elder Rich during part of the summers, as well putting up hay on that ranch. Ida K. Boss, Christian's daughter, wrote, he also took some time and worked in the cottonwood mines to earn money for John III and his family's passage from Switzerland. He was also involved in the cheese making business with his father and brothers and also establishing a dairy of his own. Ida also tells about the killing of a bear that was invading the livestock corrals by her dad and his brothers, John, David, and Jacob, while they were still working for Elder Rich. John III worked for Elder Rich this, his first winter in Bear Lake, so apparently some of the boys were still working for Apostle Rich after 1873. It was during these early years that Christian bought the squatter's rights to the land north of of, of North Street in Bern from Apostle Rich for 20 head of steers and proved up on his homestead rights at Bern and build his home there. Samuel moved with the family to Ovid in Bear Lake in the spring of 1871 at the age of 19 and helped with the building of a cabin using the logs that Mr. Herzog, Christian, Godfrey, and David had gotten out and stockpiled the fall before. He was also involved with the establishing of the cheese industry working with his father in Ovid. At some point during the fall of 1872 Samuel went back to Logan 
and was working on helping to build the Logan Temple. This work was performed by assignment as donated time like being assigned to help on the welfare farm. During this period he courted Elizabeth ha Haney, then married her on December 9, 1872 in the Endowment House in Salt Lake City. Elizabeth was a daughter of John Haney and Susanna Klausner. According to Uncle George's History of Burn, Samuel also spent some time with his brother Christian between 1872 and 1873 working in the Cottonwood Mines, raising cash to contribute to John III and Magdalena's immigration fund. Some time after their marriage, Samuel and Elizabeth moved back to Bear Lake as their first baby was born in January 1874 in Ovid, about six months after John the Third and Magdalena emigrated and were living down by Aspen Creek on the Rich Ranch looking after sheep and cattle. It was during this winter that Magdalena's health worsened and by March she had to be taken back to Ovid. Samuel and Elizabeth's first son, Samuel Jr., was born in Ovid in January 1874. That spring they moved to Montpelier, and that is where Joseph was born in June of 1875. Then came a daughter, Clara, born in November 1876 in Montpelier. Then came Ezra in 1878, and John Henry in 1879, both born in Montpelier. Ezra, Ezra was about two and John Henry was a, a babe in arms when a diphtheria epidemic went through and both were victims and both died. Then Rose was born in Montpelier in 1881. 